Welcome back. This is part two of the video on the small anvil project. And I'm at the molding bench out in the garage. I'm going to ram up one or two of these and we'll see what they look like and if they work. Stick with me. This is the actual flask that I used at the high school 45 years ago. I made them, a whole bunch of them. Most of them were scrapped from uh, elevator tubing when they replaced the hydraulic elevator at the school and it's just the, was the perfect size for a child for a 14 year old boy to use because they weren't so heavy the the bigger ones uh, they really couldn't manage because some of them, them uh, still only weighed 90 pounds so this is just a perfect one for these small projects Now there's barely room in there for the two patterns. It's, it's kind of tight, but I'm going to try it anyway.
I always had the kids put their initials on here. Of course, you couldn't read it half the time anyway, because sometimes we couldn't open them the same hour because the bell was ringing or had rung. It was always a mad scramble near the end of the hour. Watch the shrinkage. I'm not sure if it'll be visible, but there'll always be a sinkhole right in here as the metal cools and shrinks in the thickest spot. It's still in the slushy stage. Neither liquid nor solid. Like sherbet. It's been about 30 minutes since I poured the metal, but it'll still be very hot, so I'm going to go ahead and open it right now. And there it is. They look pretty good. All right, it's cooling down, but it's still way too hot to touch. So I'm going to brush the sand off of it, not a whole lot on it. And we'll go downstairs, examine them, and then I'll cut them off of the sprue. This pattern wrapper was given to me, made for me by Sand Rhymer. You may have watched his videos. He's an old Navy man, molder, and that really worked well. That might have been the first time I used it. If the purpose is just to loosen up the pattern in the sand so you can withdraw it. All right, I've cooled these down a bit, and they're looking pretty good. We had a little bit of sand fall in, and but the whole idea, and you wouldn't believe how bad some of the castings were that the kids made, but it didn't matter because the whole idea was now they're going to go to work with a big coarse file and then a fine file and sometimes they had so much fall in that you have to use a hacksaw to get it out of there. All right, I'll saw these off. Just for the heck of it, let's see how much shrinkage we got. This is the small one at 3.784. And the actual casting is going to be a little shorter. 3.751. So what, about 30,000 shorter? About a 30 second. That's why you have to use a shrink rule with your pattern making if in act you actually care about it. it doesn't matter for this that would be so easy to do using the uh, slicing program to just make it you know five percent larger this is the small one let's look for defects it looks pretty good in this area that I was worried about had a little fall in there at the parting line probably from withdrawing it couldn't matter less I can take that off with a file parting line will always produce a flashing and it will all be machined should have had a larger gate probably to prevent shrinkage but I don't see much shrinkage overall I don't see any defects on this particular piece that amount to anything now on the larger one, I don't know what happened there. Something fell in. I don't know what that is. It's a cavity. That's all okay. So is yeah, a little bit of fall in right there and some fall in, quite a bit of fall in right there. 
which is why and I kind of predicted that that I had filled this one but that's not the pattern that I use okay these are our good looking castings I had even considered expanding this series and making uh, match plates but I made another video some time ago with those little frying pans match plates very little interest in that so I don't think I'll go to the work of doing that because it's a tremendous amount of work really even this I've been working on <laughs> including the patterns for weeks now but the actual video just took a day and a half perhaps and you can see it's about the size of that anvil all right I'm gonna go ahead and clean these up I believe I'll mill the top and the bottom so that they're true the kids didn't do that because it was a freshman class but that will clean it up real nice nicer than it needs to be for a paperweight and uh, then I'll come back and show that to you and that'll be the end of the video it is the same Ted Sikora who helped me with the anvils that did the original oil can holder for a drill press watch that video video number 557 is the cast oil can holder check it out earlier in the video I talked about the layering and all the little detail lines and they will all show up in the final casting can you see that now that's not a big deal but if you wanted it smoother and had to have it smoother you might need to do a little filling like I talked about here but I don't think this that's necessary for a paperweight but in the high school now the boys would go to work with a file in the bench vise and uh, just whittle this away and clean it up polish it as well as they could or as much as they wanted to but I'm going to go over to the milling machine right now and we'll mill off the bottom so that it, it sets perfectly level and true takes away the gate and the taper which is the draft so let's take a look at how I'm going to set this up one could certainly do this on an abrasive machine but you know how are you going to hold it certainly not like this BAM and down it goes and the kids will get things like this stuck between the, the, the abrasive paper and the table here and break the belt so I had to make this off limits because one kid would would hog it for the whole hour as well and then ruin the belt so I you can file it do anything you want but I'm going to show you again how to do it in the milling machine but if you do not have a milling machine a file will be your best friend this is the larger of the two and I can't count on it just setting on that gate and I don't want to take the time to file that off or I might as well use a file uh, to start with so I'm taking two little parallels and actually these are 5 16 lathe tool bits and I've already taken a file to remove any little irregularities right there I'm basically straddling it like this you won't be able to see that because that'll be down in the vise jaws let me set that up and the vise of course will be gripping this not this this is a carbide cutter with three inserts wide enough to do it in one pass including the bottom so I'll just take one or two passes right across there and that's all I need I'm not at all satisfied with this finish I think I'll go back over that with another cutter but I switched cutters here now to mill this short step here there's not much to that I want to go by that in just one pass and that's a three-quarter carbide I hope it's sharp enough to do the job I'll take a real light cut now with this fly cutter. C 
since this is now a true surface, I'm going to set it without parallels. It just happens to be the right size. The smaller one will be different, but that sets right at the, on the bottom of the vise. And when I tighten the vise up, there's just enough left there to where I'm not going to hit the vise. And that's going to work great. Now, I'm not sure if I can go right in there with the fly cutter or if I need to go back and rough it off, but I think I'll try the fly cutter and see what it does, but it'll take several passes because we've got a gate. I've always got some viewers that say, why don't you use a fly cutter? Well, now I'm using a fly cutter. The machining turned out quite well, better on the one than the other. Now as far as the parting line here is concerned, I am going to file this just a little bit rather than machine it. Now notice in here, I'm going to use a half round and a, a rat tail file, but I don't necessarily want to take all of that off or care, because when you look at a casting, such as this one made many years ago, you can almost always still see the parting line. So that's just honesty in the way it was built. Well, there we go. They cleaned up pretty nice. As you can see, I don't try to take everything off that parting line, but that's good enough. At the high school, some kids would spend so much time polishing and buffing, you could almost see your face in it. Others would do a rather crude job. But there they are, a couple of aluminum paperweights for your consideration. Hope you enjoyed the video on pattern making and casting and cleaning them up. This is Mr. Pete saying so long for now and I'll see you next time.